Awesome. Ushers, you can get them. And as they do that, I just want you guys to welcome our senior leader, Jim Baker. All right. I think you guys are louder when you're standing and saying those. That was amazing. Well, welcome, welcome. Well, hey, we're going to do something. Well, we've had a lot of like good things happening here, and we just love to celebrate them. So I'm going to ask our Navajo mission strip team to come up, led by Pastor Josh Richter. So this is uh, Josh Richter, our children's pastor, and they recently took a mission trip, took some youth and, I'm mean, sorry, some children and some of their parents to uh, the Navajo yep. Nation. So why don't you tell us where you went, what happened, and then All I right. think we're going to hear from some of the uh, participants here. Yeah, so we went at the end of July, we went down to the Navajo Nation in New Mexico. So it's pretty fun. You get to fly in the States and stay with English-speaking people, but you still get the crazy third world experience. So... It's really, really fun. I, you know what? I haven't even asked these five what they're going to share. If I count myself, I guess. <laughs> so I want them to share first, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share here at the end. Okay, yeah. I'm first. Um, so there's a couple of things. First, one of the things that impacted me was really getting to know the team. Um, the team was really great, getting to meet new people and how kind and willing everyone was to help. So we made really good friends. We all were very upset when we had to leave each other. Um, and then <laughs> the second thing was just seeing how these kids like barely have anything at all. Like I remember hearing one kid say when we were giving out candy and things, one kid said, what's candy? And like some of these kids don't know what candy is and don't know what like these like simple toys are that we use all the time. And I thought that it was just really cool just to get to give them stuff that they don't ever really receive and get to just bless them in the way that we did, so. So one of the things that we were able to do was give out things that we had and we stayed in a house instead of staying in a hotel so we could have extra money to do more things. And um, one of the things that we were able to do was give out clothes, because a lot of the kids don't have clothes there. And that inspired me to, I'm gonna start writing to different clothing companies and asking them to give to different places. We didn't go to a nudist colony, I just wanna make sure you guys know that. It was, they had at least one pair of clothes. A lot of them wore, though, the same outfit. By the third night, the kids are even coming up to us adults saying, they're in the same clothes. Like, they have the same clothes on that they wore Monday night, and today's, you know, it's Wednesday or Thursday. So, I'm Jen. This is my son, Max. And Jen, it's nice to see you enjoyed it so much. You actually tanned yourself to look like an I did. Indian. So I did. That's I good. wanted to blend in. I had to be yeah. the people over there, you know? <laughs> so, it was just a privilege for me to go on this trip, and... Um, as a mom, I just had so many amazing mom moments there, getting to watch Max um, stretch, you know, be stretched and to grow. As most of you know, if you've been on a missions trip, that, that as an adult, you're, you also are stretched and you grow. But how, it was just a privilege to get to watch these kids. I'm so thankful for Pastor Josh and Pastor Kate because these kids are so equipped to do this. Yeah. They are so equipped from, you know... <laughs> We, um, we had the opportunity to meet other teams there. So there were 19 of us there. And we had a team from Texas and a team from Raleigh. And we had the youngest crew with us. In fact, um, Kate, Andre, and her son, Cohen, went as well. They're not up here today. But we had the youngest crew with us. And I'm telling you, I mean, we had teenagers there. We had married couples. They were all so blown away by our kids. You know, they, these amazing. kids were bold. I got to, you know, witness, you know, Max prophesying over other kids in the evening Aww. services, looking at kids in their face, say, you are loved, you know, you are so so special. I mean, just as a mom, your heart can't melt any more than that. So we had a couple really cool moments. One that I wanted to share, a testimony that I wanted to share was, um, you know, it was just fun to see Holy Spirit move that week. What we did while we were there is we did a vacation Bible school. 
um, in the evening for the Navajo Nation, for these kids. Again, it's third, I mean, you got a picture, it's very third world. These children have nothing. We would go out in buses, if you can picture that. You know, Pastor Josh would be driving around in a white bus, dangling candy, saying, come hop in my van, and these kids would be running, <laughs> hopping in the van. <laughs> The first day I realized I was wearing all black with black sunglasses. I had my hair a little slicked back, and I'm like in a white unmarked van, like, get in the van, I have candy. Like, and the parents let him jump in the van, you know? So, um, so towards the end of the week, so these kids are coming. I mean, they are just... They are absolutely love. They are all hopping in the van and they're piling out of the van and they're there for three, four hours in the evening. I mean, they didn't want to get back in the van to go home. They are having um, so much fun there. So we wanted to, Zion, we decided about like Thursday, I think, actually kind of last minute, that we wanted to be able to give a raffle prize away on Friday night or last night and we wanted to get these kids bikes. Okay, a boy bike and a girl bike. So Pastor Josh approached Max and I and said, hey, I think that you, you guys need to go pick these bikes out. So Max and I were driving to um, the nearest mar Walmart. So that is the difference between third world country and this, because <laughs> there was a Walmart within vicinity, you know? So Max and I drove to Walmart, and um, on the way there, Max and I were just having great conversation, and Max just said, well, Mom, how will we know what bikes to get? I mean, there's kids that are coming that are four, and then there's also their older siblings that are coming that are 19. How, how would we know what side? Do we get a tricycle, or do we get an adult bike, you know? So it was just an amazing moment for me as a mom to just say, you know what, that's what Holy Spirit's for, you know? We're just going to pray, and we're going to ask Holy Spirit to just highlight the girl's bike and the boy's bike that we need, and he's going to take care of the rest. We don't have to worry about that. So we went in Walmart, and Max picked out these two amazing bikes, and we were texting, you know, Pastor Josh, I think we should get helmets too. Go for it. Get helmets too. So you kind of got to make a decision what age, what size, you know. So Max and I make a decision, and we get, you know, 20-inch bikes, 8 to 12, you know. Um, and we, uh, Friday night, they draw, and we did a raffle on Friday night. So they draw the tickets out, and the little boy runs up, and he is the perfect size. He's, so he's 10 years old, and he comes running up. He is not going to let this bike go. I mean, we had to wheel this bike back down, so, and he is protectively putting his arm on the seat because there was no... You might want to tell the other part of that story, too, because it's pretty awesome. Um, same thing happened with the girl. Her little raffle ticket gets pulled, and she goes running up, and she is exactly in the right size. I mean, just beaming with pride at her brand-new bike, and Max, the special moment for me is Max comes running, running up to me saying, mom, mom, it's perfect. They're the perfect size. And in, in my heart, I'm just thinking, that's Holy Spirit. Like, that's what he is there for. We can ask him these questions and he can speak to us no matter what age we are, you know, and he can share that with us. So that particular evening, one, one more, do I have time for one more? Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, one more thing. So that particular <laughs> evening, we were, um, we were giving, doing the bike raffle, and out, a little bit out of our control, but we were very late to the meeting that night. And so our buses were on a later schedule than normal, picking these kids up. And um, we, we out of, uh, I think you had already left, and a couple of the other drivers had left. Again, I mean, we're like an hour behind schedule. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we see five kids start walking towards us. We're like, you guys are from the reservation. How did you get here? They're like, we thought we missed it. We thought we missed the van. We started walking. They walked about five miles to get to Vacation Bible School that night because they did not want to miss it. And, wow. You know, as I've just been processing this and talking to the Lord, I'm thinking, you know what? Sometimes we, we think we missed it. You know, sometimes we think we missed the van, you know, or it passed us by or didn't pick us up. But you know what? All we have to do is put one foot in front of the other you know, with a, little, with a little determination in our step, right? And just keep our eyes fixed on the, on the prize. For these kids, the prize is that bike. Can you stop? For these, for these kids, the prize was the bike. You know, for us, the prize is Jesus. You know, if we just keep our eyes That's fixed good. on him and we put one foot in front of the other and just keep moving forward, you know? It's like these kids, they, they, they do. They teach you so much when you go on this. So anyway, just... It was an amazing experience. Uh, please, I mean, ha missions trips are so important, but it was just such a cool, mo this particular missions trip is so awesome for families. Uh, I'm telling you, it is amazing for families. It is awesome for kids. So it was, it was a great week, definitely a highlight for me.
Good job, John. It's good. I love this time when we went, we really attacked strongholds and mental strongholds was our, our goal. And uh, so each one of the services was aimed at uh, some of the things they really struggle with. It's same, same as us, a lot of the same thinking and perspective that we have for when we were young kind of follows us through the rest of our life and we have to battle that. Uh, plug for children's ministry. And, and so that was the same th there. And so, but the things they're dealing with is like their Navajo God uh, is waiting for someone to make a mistake so he can obliterate them, obliterate their family, just take them out, make an example of them. And so some of those things would come into their Christian walk with God as they're still serving God out of fear because they want to do enough so that he doesn't take their family out. And so when we, we had one whole service where it was all, the whole end was just our team spreading out and people speaking over, people in their face like, Zeke, God loves you. He thinks you're amazing. And their minds are just like, mm. This was, I mean, we had one kid up, come up and he said, this changes everything. Wow, that's so good. <laughs> that was, you can't, you can't hope for much more than that. And so then so we, had, we had that one night, another night, um, we were praying as a team and we're like, we're teaching this way and God wants to do this at the end and they don't match at all. We're like, let's just go for it, I don't know. So that's what we did and uh, we, at the end, we said, here's what we want to do. Everybody, uh, every Navajo in here who's sick, I want you to raise your hand. And so they, they did. And uh, typically for a Navajo, they don't have the money to be able to go to a uh, regular hospital. And so they, even Christians will go see the medicine man, which is crazy. And so normal for them is, okay, I got to go see the medicine man. Usually he's going to ask me to do some things that I'm super uncomfortable with and I don't want to do, but... I gotta be sick or my kids gotta get, or I gotta not be sick or my kids gotta be healthy or whatever and so I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And so they'll do these crazy things. And so these Navajos raise their hand and I said, okay, Navajos sitting by them that are Christians, lay your hands on them and say even a couple words, words just say, be healed in Jesus' name. Say whatever pops in your head. And so the, they all bow their heads and it was, it was so fun because I was up on stage and you see the, the people that are being prayed for all of a sudden they're like. <laughs> and then the people that are praying for them feel that jerk and they look and they're like. <laughs> and it was like popcorn through the whole sanctuary. It was like. <laughs> until the whole place is like. Oh my God, and they're all like talking all at once because they cannot believe that. God loves them so much that he would work through them to bring wow. healing to others. They didn't have to depend on the medicine man anymore. God loves them enough to meet their needs now. Amen. And it just, so good. It just stirred me up to think, because you know what? There's so many f people that we pass by in the stores and whatever that they might be having a similar experience to those that we met on the, on the missions field. And, and it doesn't take much. It's just something small, just being open to let God say, hey, do you know that there's a God that thinks you're totally special, you're amazing? It's not hard for any of us to stop and do that. But just like on the missions field, we can change this region, we can change this city with little things that we're already equipped with. You have the same spirit that we had on the missions field. That's good. We just need to let them out. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Pray for, I think we should pray for Zach since we were talking yeah. about cancer this morning. So we prayed for cancer this morning. Wait, do you want to do this? I have a hard time giving up the mic, so. So while we were there, I'll let you pray. How about I? Uh, okay. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. Teamwork. So while we were there, we had an opportunity to, um, the pastor of the Navajo church grandson, 14 years old, has cancer, stage four in his hip, and he's completely bedridden. So throughout the week, especially us as adults, would just go into their home. They had a parsonage on site at the church. So we would just frequently go in the room and minister to the family. 
um, and just have an opportunity to pray over Zach. I mean, our heart's cry was when we left that we would be up and walking around and coming to Vacation Bible School at, the night, at night with all the other kids. But I just think with just cancer this morning and going after it, I just don't want to miss this opportunity um, yeah. to just pray. This little boy has a call on his life, you know? He does. And I just... Um, Man, I, I just a child. It was just really hard to see a bedridden 14-year-old, and um, they have they have these beads. He is one of those. They're they're believers, obviously. They run this church, and they have um, they are having to go see their own Navajo. Uh, doctors there. And every time you go to a doctor there, they give you a bead when you get a treatment. So Zach actually has necklaces in his room with all these beads that basically are reminding him every day of what hasn't worked, the chemo that hasn't worked, the radiation that hasn't worked. So, you know, um, he had 25 chemo beads. He had 30 some radiation beads. And so they'd fill up a necklace and then they'd start a new one with them. And when we went, the, the, parents were like, let me show you these beads. Let me show you what he's gone through. And it's this handful of necklaces. You're like, this is the time when he almost died. This is the time when the doctors did this and it didn't work. And it was just like handfuls and handfuls of reminders of things that didn't work. But we know a God that can overcome anything. Well, let's pray for Zach. So let's pray. Yeah. God, I thank you, thank you Lord. that you are the God of more than enough and that Every weapon of the devil is a failure attempt when it comes against a child of God. And so we just command healing into his body right now. Total, complete healing in the name of Jesus that that cancer must die and flee from the body. We stand against you right now, cancer. We command you, you must go. We command strength back into those bones and strength to return to those muscles and those ligaments. We command his body to be healed in Jesus' name so that he can continue the call upon his life and step fully into the, the revival in the Navajo nation that he is called to bring. And so we just thank you, God, that today things have changed because of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, thanks gang. Awesome, awesome. Well, we love missions around here, and so uh, yeah, we just encourage everyone, you're a Zion here, just, just plan on every three to five years going on a mission.